Hello everybody, my name is Halo. Welcome to this series where we're covering operating systems concepts in Python. Uh, today we're going to be dealing with inter-process communication using pipes, that is IPC using pipes. We're going to be dealing with two ways to do that. We're going to first look at one read pipe and one write pipe. At the same time, we're going to be looking at uh, two pipes where there's two children and one parent. Uh, we'll see how we'll do that uh, and this is going to be a code walkthrough only. This is not going to be something that I'm going to be explaining the concepts of what pipes are and all of that. Um, but yeah, I, if you guys uh, want to know what pipes are or the concepts behind it, I highly suggest you to go ahead, watch some theoretical video and come back for this for the code part. Okay, so let me just go ahead and paste the logic that I have written and this is what we need to first understand okay when you're dealing with one read pipe and one write pipes these are the methods that you're going to be using os.pipe read pipe and write pipe by the way we're using windows subsystem for linux so in case there are functions which is specific to linux uh, please understand that this is because we're using windows subsystem for linux and this whatever code we're running we're running in a linux machine basically then what is os.fork fork is nothing but creation of a new process right and os.pipe is creating pipes then os.close OS.close is nothing but closing a process. What is OS.read? Read is nothing but reading the read pipe. That is why there are two arguments here. One is read pipe and 1024. 1024 is nothing but the length in bytes that we're reading. This is what we're going to be using here. That's why I've kind of put everything that you need to know before we go ahead. And OS.write of write pipe, comma, the data, and you have to encode this data. Okay, that's it. So we are doing, we are assuming that the child reads here and the parent writes here. And the logic behind that is basically creating the two pipes and os.fork if the child is there close the parent pipe and read the data because if you want to read the data you need to close the write pipe if you want to write you need to close the read pipe that's it that's the idea if the parent closes the child pipe send the data and wait to complete okay so let's see how that looks like for the one pipe okay so let me just import os first and i'll play that code as well so this is what i've written so initially we're importing os then we are uh, defining this function and we are setting this read pipe and write pipe which is nothing but os.pipe. Then we are forking a process. So this will be forked into child and parent process. So if this particular integer is 0, see when you know that the fork method returns two values, right? So one will be 0 and the other case, any other value, that will be the parent process. If 0 is returned, then it's a child process, right? In that particular case, what we'll do, we'll close the write pipe first because that's what we discussed before and then we read from the read pipe. So os.read, we read, uh, read whatever is there and child retrieve this particular value. Then see, if the child is reading something, something needs to be written, right? So what we'll do is, we will os.close read pipe here in case it's the parent, then we do some random data that we're doing. We write this to the write pipe with data.encode. So how this will look like, let me just go ahead and uh, do a if uh, name equal to equal to main and then I'll just do uh, this R1 W1 pipe, okay? And if I run this particular code, you can see, that's it. So writing data to the write pipe and reading from the read pipe. Let me just clear this so that, uh, yeah, you guys are not distracted from other code. So the child has received, this is a demonstrator in pipe. So now let's go ahead and see what if there are two pipes, okay? That is two children, one parent. We'll create one, uh, one particular process. We'll fork it, then fork it again. Okay, so exact same strategy only, except we'll use two different pipes, we'll fork twice to create two children processes, but the parent will be same only. So what the children will do is, it will write data to the pipes. Finally, the parent will wait for the children to finish, then it will read the data from the both pipes and then print it. Okay, and extra what we need is this os.exit functions. This is used because we are writing from the child, we have to close it. Okay, after writing and then os.wait pid is used to uh, wait for the file child process to complete. Okay, so how that looks like in code, let, we need to define another function only. It's very simple. We do define pipe to child to. So there'll be two pipes, two child. So you declare two pipes, then you do a fork. That is, you are declaring a process creating one child, one parent. Till now, we have not created the second child. So let us deal with the condition where it is initially a child process, okay? So this is the first child. What the first child will do, it will close the read pipe, close the write pipe two. It will write data to the first write pipe. The first child process will write it to the first write pipe, okay? So os.write, write pipe one, data.encode and exit once you're done with this process, okay? Else we need to write another case. So we need to create a second child. 
and in that we will actually deal with two other cases too. So let's go with the else condition first, create the second child with OS dot fork again when, within this particular function then you say see when you are doing OS dot fork again there will be a child and a parent process okay. So in that particular case child 2 what they will do is they will close read pipe 2 and write data to the second write pipe that is what we are doing here. So we are closing read pipe 2 we are closing the first write pipe and we are writing data to the second write pipe data from child process 2 is the data that we are writing and we are exiting that process finally is where we say if this is the parent what do you do else condition this is for the uh, parent what the parent does is, is waits for both of g these child processes to finish how we are doing that is nothing but we are doing wait pid process of zero so process is the initial fork it is waiting for the child process to complete wait pid of p2 is the second fork it is waiting for that child to also complete okay once this is done finally the parent, parent can do its job which is nothing but closing both the write pipes reading both the read pipes and printing it out to the user data.decode that is what we are doing and here also we are doing data.encode we discussed that in the starting of this lecture itself finally what we will do is we will just go ahead and print pipe 1 and pipe 2 followed by the data that we have gotten from both read pipes that is it. So how this will look like is now if I just go ahead and add this function here this is what pipe 2 child 2 and uh, let us remove this once again let me just extend this. So you can see pipe 1 data received from child process 1, pipe 2 data from child process 2. So that is what we are writing here also. If you see in the first write pipe, you are writing child process 1, second write pipe, you are doing child process 2. That's it. So this should be enough code to demonstrate what inter-process communication is in two stages. That is with one pipe as well as two pipes. I hope this helps you to kind of visualize how IPC works or helps you with your lab exams. If you want to show output on a yeah, demonstration of this particular uh, problem in operating systems. I hope you are able to understand this. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I will try to answer them. If you guys can answer some questions in the comments, please do so. Help out each other. Thank you so much for watching. If this video helped you, hit that like button. I will see you in another video. By the way, all of this code is there in the GitHub. Uh, link to the GitHub is down in the description. Bye.